Mike's Daily Podcast. FFFF. Episode 917. And that's our horse, Billy. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway here at the Podcaster Valley. Today is part two of my into an interview with singer songwriter Natalie Gellman. Plus, we hear from Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, John Deere the Engineer. And look, everybody, it's Haley. Mike's Daily Podcast. <laughs> Sorry, we were singing. Go ahead. Wah, wah, wah. Very good. Haley's back. Mike's Daily wah. Podcast. So apparently the apostle said something in the Bible that has done a lot to ensure the end of our survival. That is, don't conform to anything in this world. That's so wild. What, what is the reason people on the right like to pile it on liberals for being worried about global warming? Mike's Daily Podcast. Because who cares about this world? Heaven is my selfish goal. I'm grouchy this morning. Mike's my new roommate Daily woke me up when he came home podcast. just before midnight. Yeah. And I get up at four and my dog woke me up because he isn't used to the new roommate being around yet. Haley's here! Hi! Where were you uh, the other day? I was in the void. In the void? Oh, it's scary. It's where all radio people go when they're not on the air. Excellent. It's good. Is it? What's it like in the void? That's like saying, "What does water taste like?" Hmm. <laughs> I never thought about what water tastes like. Tastes like water. But what does water taste like? Never touch the stuff. <laughs> Did you like my WC Fields? Beautiful. That was never touch the stuff. Uh, Chad Kroger and Avril Lavigne are getting divorced. Finally. I mean, that was a little creepy. Douche rock. Douche rock. <laughs> Look at this photograph. What do you think? It's on MikeSillyPodcast.com. But that section doesn't come until the end part of the show. <laughs> I'm laughing like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The, the, the podcast picture will be of Natalie Gelman because we have part two of our Into an Interview with her today. Oh, that makes sense. Did you ask if she likes Nickelback? No, I didn't. You should do that. I should have asked her that. You should have asked her that. Crud. I will tell you, though, if you were listening to yesterday's show and heard the interview, there was a phone ringing in the background. Mm. I had to chop. All of a sudden, the phone stops ringing. But I chopped out a huge section where I, I said to Natalie, um, hold on. I'm wor- actually working at a radio station. <laughs> I have to answer the phones. That's why they have me here. So, And she's like, okay, that's fine. So I, I put her on hold and I'm like... Hello, radio station. And the guy's like, man, I love it when you play the 80s, man. 80s are great. I'm living in, I, I, I live in Livermore and I listen to the 80s. I love it. Nice. I'm like, thank you. That's nice. great. The 80s were pretty cool. But we were discussing how we hate say something. I'm giving up on you. We were discussing how we hated say something. I, I, say something. I'm giving up on you. Yeah. It's a long song. It's mm-hmm. slow. It's mm-hmm. sad. Mm-hmm. It's sappy. It's it's not that sappy or sad because there's no real point to it. And I heard the guy in that song cheated on his wife. No way. And I hate all musicians that cheat on their wives. Yeah. Wait, was that a dig at me? <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> Because you, d- you don't like the John Lennon because he cheated on Yoko. No, that's not the... That's just like one sort of compounding thing. Don't you like John Lennon's so, solo stuff like Imagine? No, I like... Um, Why don't you like Imagine? If I there's... like... Oh, uh, what was that song he did? Um, Imagine is boring to me. But the one he wrote about his son... Oh, beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful, beautiful boy. I like that one. You don't like Number Nine Dream? I like Number Nine Dream as well. I like his. Ah, uh, Bawakawa, Pose, Pose. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Did you ever uh, hear R.E.M.'s version of that? No. It's pretty weird. But there are so many R.E.M. songs, I can't be bothered to listen to all You of them. don't like R.E.M. either? No, I like R.E.M. Oh. It's just they have so many albums and so many songs yeah. that I have to pick and choose. And you were born after they were popular, yeah. so you didn't. You were kind of like fed them all at once. So it's Pretty much, yeah. I do really like Shiny Happy People. And yeah. the Sesame Street version of Shiny Happy People. No, I have not heard this. Which was um, Smiling Happy Monsters. Smiling Happy Monsters, monsters having fun. Smiling Happy Monsters. And, and Michael Stipe did that on, on Sesame Street? On Sesame Street, and then all the monsters would get sad. And then they were like, Something has gone wrong. Crying. And- Crying. Oh. Yeah, it was about happy and sad. I learned so much. That's great. I just heard it last week. That was a good song. It was a good single on the radio because you would get you got REM in there, and then you got the girl from B52s. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't forget their names now. Me too. Kate and somebody. Yeah. But yeah, such a such a good voice that fit in with REM. I'm disappointed that. She, you know, she wasn't part of the band. But you know B-52s and R.E.M. are from Athens, Georgia. Rock Lobster. Rock Lobster! Down! 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 Welcome to the podcast where we just talk about music and then we have a musician on. Yeah. But we don't talk about that musician. But we, you know who... Which musician? What were we talking about? <laughs> Chad Kroger? Oh, we, you interviewed Chad Kroger? That's no, impressive. no, no. Uh, I, I don't think I could do that interview. Hi, Ch- I'd be like, hi, Chad Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> I just took the mic out of its little slot. Okay. Beautiful. Um, hey, look, who just walked in. You haven't met this character yet. Have I? Hi, Haley. It's like so nice to meet you. Oh, hey, I recognize your voice from something. I'm Sally. It's too hard to give crap to your visor. Oh, my God. Like, you don't remember me from, like, being on my show? No. Oh, my God. You guys are making fun of Say Something. I'm giving up on this one. Wait. Oh. You're the one that didn't warm up my croissants. No, I work in the gift shop. I'm not a cook. Well, the, the microwave is in your gift shop, though. Um, I told you to get that out of there because I don't like the radiation that comes out of it. Oh my gosh, my mom will, like, not let me stand in front of the microwave. Your mom on. won't? If, if, it's, if it's on and I'm, like, standing in front of it, she'll be like, please move. She'll be, like, practically oh, crying. She's, like, worried about her baby getting hit by microwaves. <laughs> I work in radio! <laughs> and then my mom has a microwave till that's so old that it started like burning the, the kitchen counter. Nice. She got rid of it though. Oh. Oh my god, like microwaves are like so scary. But they make my popcorn. That's true. Microwaves. Popcorn. Yay, popcorn. Look who else is walking in. <gasps> Hello, Mike. This is Floyd the Foreman. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Hello, Haley. Hello. I sense that you are very technically minded like I am. How many megahertz are in a phone? <laughs> there was a guy yeah. at, at, at our other job mm-hmm. where we record people doing talk shows. Yeah. And after he recorded his talk show, he came up to me and he goes, How many megahertz are required in a phone? And I'm like, I do, it, Am I supposed to know that? Because I am. I didn't know I was supposed to be that technically minded. I know we have to run boards and things, but. I just said, I don't know, a couple kilohertz. I'm pretty sure Kilo- it varies by phone. Bip, kilobips? Like, um... What was it? Exactly. Varies, That's what like, I should have said, was, um... I'm pretty sure it varies by phone. Um... Yeah. Because I know you can charge... Like, I know watts. I know, like, watts needed to charge phones adequately. Like, the smaller phones can have as small as two watt chargers. Uh, but a 5-watt charger is pretty standard for, say, like a, an iPhone, but then you need a 10- or 12-watt charger for a tablet. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, is that true, John Deere the Engineer? Um, I don't know, but I like this rocking chair. I need to burn that. 
I really do. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, where can they find us? MikeSillyPodcast.com. And there are links to where to listen to this show all over the place. Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, TuneIn, Tuna. Hey, hey I, re- I really recommend going to Facebook or Tumblr uh, and just clicking like on Mike's Daily Podcast or follow, I guess, if it's Tumblr. Because not only will you uh, be I'm able clapping. to see all the shows, but if you miss them at any time, Mike is constantly reposting them and reblogging them and things. So you will always make sure to see the podcast if you like us. That's right. You will never be yes. left behind. Yes. Because I know how Facebook works. They, they like, bury your posts and nobody can ever see them. I, I used to that. believe that, but I've seen every single one of your posts. Why is that? Maybe they know that you're on the show. I don't know. Maybe. Mark. It's because you keep tagging me in the posts. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. I just got to tag the world. Tag the world. And make the world hate me because I just tagged it. Tag a great big world. Say something, I'm shooting you for singing the song. At a great big world, your song sucks. <laughs> Didn't they have a song a song that was actually pretty good before that one came out? I don't know, but that's probably true. Yeah, I want, I want to say that there was another song that hit radio that was pretty decent before that one. Yeah. You know... Oh, if you want to help out the show with the the, the Amazon link, go to Amazon. if you're going to go to Amazon and buy go to anything, Mike's Daily Podcast. for example, Definitely. perhaps you'd like to buy Say Something I'm Giving Up on You because you like that kind of stuff. And A great big world. Do you remember the part in High Fidelity when the guy says to Jack Black, uh, hey, I'm try- trying to buy um, Stevie Wonder's. I just called to say I love you. And Jack Black's like, why would you want that? Oh my gosh, is your daughter in a coma? Because he was going to buy it for his daughter. and Right. You're not a fan of High Fidelity? I've never seen it. Oh. I've never seen it. It's isn't okay. That, isn't that the name of that one in Ario Speedwagon album? That's High Infidelity. Infidelity. See, I knew it. So you think... Oh. Uh, what's the one? Take it on the run, um, baby. baby. Yeah. So that's the way you want, and I don't need you around. Bum, bum, bum. And that other song that was popular uh, is on that album. Not called. I Can't Stop This Feeling Anymore. The other one. No, uh, it's. Uh, uh, oh, uh, f- on the And sh- I'm gonna keep on loving you. Cause it's the only thing I wanna do. I don't wanna sleep. Sleep? I do wanna sleep. Yeah, me too. Alright, so let's get to the interview so we can sleep while I'm interviewing. Yeah. Please. And and, uh, and 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 Natalie Gellman has a beautiful voice, so she'll sing for you. Oh, you can also help us out through the PayPal and become an inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster. Podcastered. And uh, yeah, the blog, the Daily Podcast picture, all there at mikesdailypodcast.com. Ooh, and the email is uh, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. Into an interview. I'm speaking with Natalie Gellman, a fantastic singer-songwriter, and I actually found out about her. Uh, I was looking... I'm a friend of Nathan McEwen. He's actually been on the show and he uh, posted a duet of you two singing the song Lately, isn't it? Yeah. It's a gorgeous song. He actually wrote it with Chelsea Williams who some of your listeners might know. I don't. Have you ever interviewed Chelsea? No, I actually have not. But She's, I... Um, I think we did play that. That uh, did they sing together on that song originally? Yeah, it, they wrote t- they wrote it together. Yeah, so he might have had that play on the air. I don't know. Yes, <laughs> and is she also? Does she also perform in public? Like I guess uh, yeah. busking or whatever you call it. Exactly. So she mostly, I think, the Third Street Promenade. I don't know. I don't know her personally. Um, but I, I have known of her for a while, and I know she plays the Third Street Promenade a lot. In Santa Monica. Yeah, in Santa Monica. And she tours nationally as well. And so then you heard the song somehow. Yeah. Th- from well, Nathan and I, I've been a fan of Nathan's music for a while, too. And um, we played together a couple years back in Pasadena at the Pasadena Festival, and um, just wanted to play some shows together and play on each other's music. And so 
um, he shared that song with me and I had never heard it before um, and immediately loved it because you can totally relate, you know, as a musician and coming home <laughs> or missing um, missing my, my boyfriend often. And so I um, totally can relate to it and just think it's gorgeous. Um, and after we we had played it like three or four times at his shows and my shows and whatnot, and I said to him, you know, we got to record this. <laughs> so. Yeah, and that's and that video is up on YouTube of the two of you. Just I mean, it's just a camera pointing at you, and you guys start singing, and it sounds great. Thank you. Well, you're we on. With it. Uh, you're on tour right now. Mm-hmm. Where are you? I'm, What's your t- latest tour uh, taking you? Where is that taking you? I am back east for about three weeks. Um, some dates in South Carolina, and then going up up to the Northeast for um, shows in New York and Connecticut. Wow! So yeah. you you are bi coastal. I am. <laughs> Uh, and it must be pretty humid over there right now, being the end of August and early September. It is. I know. I'm, I haven't really checked what it's going to be like in New York, but growing up there, August was always my least favorite month. <laughs> yeah, that's actually the only time I've been in New York was in the August. Oh, boy. That was hot. And it starts to kind of smell yeah. <laughs> as well. So yeah. that. Yes, you have the New York smell. Uh, yeah. I can't believe you did all that that uh, street performing, busking. Um, yeah, I'm actually still going to be doing some of that when I'm there next week and on the following week in between dates. It's something that I I still really love. So now I have never actually seen you in public uh, live, but I've seen the videos of you playing live, and it must be just something that grabs people because your voice is so just powerful. And people like must hear it and go, "Whoa, what? Is, this is look at this talent." Thank the, you. That that was just an observation. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You really, I think I learned a ton from street performing because you really have to compel people to stop. I mean, and now it's even harder with everyone having headphones in most of the time. Um, so it's definitely changed. It's something I've been doing for about 14 years and um, has taught me a lot about the way that I... I think a lot of the way I sort of play with an audience and joke with them is inspired by playing with people in the subway and kind of I'll tease them and say, oh, how do you like all the you know the gum that I put on the floor today? <laughs> so you feel like you're really in New York. Um, I'm just sort of get people to, to laugh and, and open up and um, and that seems to work in a live show too you know just acknowledging what's so and um, and taking it from there so wow now this is what's like okay so Th- this is just an observation And I know beauty is subjective and everything But you're really pretty So like And you're prettier <laughs> Now this is just subjective I mean you're prettier than Taylor Swift Or uh, Katy Perry This is just sub- subjective I'm just uh, from a subjective <laughs> point of view uh, You're not prettier than Carol King though Don't touch my Carol King She's my Carol King <laughs> And actually, you do the song by her One Fine Day, I've seen on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, I love that song. Yeah. She's such an amazing talent. But you, I mean, people, when they see you perform live, they must be like, oh my gosh, are there cameras? Did I just walk onto some t- t- TV? This is, this, anyway, it just, you don't have to pay a gazillion dollars to see Taylor Swift. You have to, the, the real money is going to see you perform live. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I think that really at the end of the day, it's the songs that get people to stop and and really listen. Mm-hmm. I don't think... I, sometimes my jokes will get them to laugh, and I, I can tell, like... I was sharing this story the other day. I mean, I've even had people tip me and buy CDs because I stood up for myself with, you know, people that have violated my personal space in the subway. Um, hmm. And so you never know what's going to get people to go, oh, I want to support you. Um, 
And so it's, it's just a really strange thing, but the songs are consistently, I mean, I had Peter Yarrow stop when he heard me in the subway a long time ago and was just listening for 20 minutes, letting trains go by, and that happens often, and hmm. at the end of it all, finally he decided, okay, I'm going to take this train coming in, and he introduced himself, and I was just, you know, word speechless, mm-hmm. and like, okay, hi. <laughs> And of course, that night I'm practicing all of the ones I don't play too often, and I think he was the only one of, you know, ten people on the platform at eleven o'clock at night on Tuesday or something, whatever it was. But um, yeah, you just I don't know. I used to try to figure out what the rhyme or reason was to it all working or not working, and um, and I, I do believe, you know, as far as sort of superficial. Um, vanity-ish things go like I really like to honor the fact that I'm asking people to look at me as they you know listen to songs Mm -hmm. and I try to show up you know as I would to a street performance the same way I would to a show Um, not to the extent of like um, you know I'm I'm playing at the Kenton Club in a few weeks and um, in Agoura Hills yeah I'm excited for that, but that's, you know, a bigger deal, and I'll probably wear, I'm not going to wear heels in the subway, but, um, you know, always honoring the music and the listeners, so. Do you know who I saw at the Canyon Club? Joan Osborne. Oh, wow, that's awesome. God, she was good. She's really good. That's, I'm excited to play there. I never have. It's it's neat. It's right there. It's, uh, it's in the, what do they call it, the Wizens Shopping Center? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Wizens. Um, Always, oh, there's good parking, so that's important. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's easy to find a parking spot. For uh, sure. Um, Natalie, I would like to also ask you about. We heard uh, most of the while the song from your latest album, Street Lamp Musician. What was the process like recording that album, producing that album, making it? Um, yeah, so that was kind of unique because the the way that that album got recorded was I was signed to a production deal, um, and so I was working with fabulous producers Mark Needham and Charlie Midnight. Um, it's what brought me out to California in the first place, um, and we really it was the first real professional thing that I had done. I had recorded two albums before then. One is I considered my debut and is actually still available. Um, but nothing as professional and that the people who played on that record, I just was always totally in awe of the musicians coming in. Um, and so we would we did actually record twelve songs and, and we didn't finish off six of them, but you know, we got the the rust and some of the bare bones um for the drums and the bass and the more guitars and stuff on six of them and we're shopping it and trying to find a home for that CD and we couldn't and we decided you know let's put it out on our own and um, and that worked pretty well for what I do it's, it's hard to find um, a home for, for indie music I think these days but um, I was pretty happy putting it out on my own and I, I have a fan base that I built up from shoot performing and all the touring I do that um, that went out and bought it and, and so that totally worked but um, it was really I just had so much fun in the studio just being blown away by the all the people I got to work with on it so and that's really what I'm grateful for <laughs> where was the studio? Um, it's in LA it's um, in Los Feliz Oh, okay. So, mm-hmm. and then, um, then uh, let's see. I was going to play "Long Stemmed Roses," and which album is that from? That's also from um, Street Light Musician. And this is so sultry, so mm-hmm. sultry. My gosh, and beautiful. And when I listen to it, I want to pour a glass of wine and stick uh, rose petals all over myself and stick uh, my feet in in a lake. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's so sultry. How did you, wh- what was the inspiration for this? That song, you know, that song's really special to me. I, um, at first, when I wrote it, I thought that I was writing it to a boyfriend at the time, to his parents. 
and they were kind of they were they're still together they were together but I just I just thought gosh I really hope I never become that sort of mo- going through the motions mm. and I think a lot of people do that and and it's nothing against them. They were both amazing people. And um, and I think it's so easy to do that. I know that I do that in all my relationships at certain times and even in my relationship with myself, you know, and because it's, you have to get, get through stuff and, and put things on back burners to get things done. But um, I just thought, you know, it really was about living more consciously in in love with the person you're with, and that mm. the ups and downs of a long term relationship, but um, still being in that relationship. And so originally, I was writing it for them, um, and then sometime after we broke up, which was about three years after I started writing the song, um, I sat down with Charlie Midnight, who was my producer and my co-writer on most of the songs on Street Lamp Musician, and still is, on a lot of my songs, we are producing my next CD together. Um, But I sat down with him and we talked for a couple hours about what the song was about. And I had written the verses, I had written the pre-chorus, I had a melody, which I don't normally write like this. I normally, everything comes together, melody and lyrics. Mm. But we, we talked and I said, you know, I can't hit the nail on the head with this one. I just don't know exactly what I'm trying to say. Nothing has really worked yet for the lyrics, for the chorus. And we were just talking about it, and he used words that I said. I think I probably said to him, you know, when you're in this long-term relationship and you're not sure if you're happy or you're not happy or how you feel, and he just literally took what I said and we turned it into lyrics. He shined the light on it, you know, and we we, um, wrote that chorus in just a few minutes after talking about it for hours and having had that song on the back burner for years. Um, wow. Long process. <laughs> yeah. But I'm happy I held on to it because I think it's a special one. So this is Long Stem Roses, Natalie Gelman from Street Lamp Musician. And people can find out more about you at nataliegelman.com. Yep. And, and let's listen to it now on Mike's Daily Podcast. Long Stem. Top of lovers day pressed against the man on the moon and I feel entirely out of my shoes in love with you quiet.
Appreciate it. As we go outside of Cafe Anyway, we're bringing Mike Stilly podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Tomorrow, the finale, the next show, the finale, if I get to the show tomorrow, of my interview with Natalie Gellman. Yeah, because tomorrow's Friday, right? And here's today's podcast picture. And the picture is of Natalie Gellman. Yay! She's pretty. Yeah. Like, it, a, like, a, like a flower. What? I didn't expect her to be blonde. No? I've never seen, like, a blonde singer-songwriter. Like, one girl Taylor band Swift? type thing. One girl band type thing. Oh, one girl band, okay. Yeah, because Taylor Swift, you know, got in the country thing, but the whole thing. Wait. No, Rilo you... Kylie was Burnett, right? Kylie Minogue? No, Rilo Kylie. Oh, Rilo Kylie. Yeah. Hey, you were saying you follow Taylor Swift on her Tumblr and she posts a lot of pictures of her cats? Of her cats, yeah. Not as much as she used to, but she does. Oh, what I was going to tell you earlier was... Uh, oh, hi, Shelly. My question did you say something about Taylor Swift? Yeah, she likes cats. Oh, my God, I love cats, too. Katy Perry also likes cats. She's got the Kitty Perry. And don't they have a, a feud, Katy Perry and Taylor Swift, over... Isn't that what Bad Blood's about? Because Katy Perry stole Taylor Swift's dancers. Why I know this, I am really... It's creepy. My 